Good evening, and welcome to MCC Sacred Journey. We're glad that you're with us tonight. If you're on Facebook, I hope you'll give us a like or comment and let us know that you're here and let us know where you're from. Um, we begin, as always, knowing that we are in the presence of God, which means we are all one in God's presence. So let us begin this evening by offering each other sign of Christ's peace. May God's peace be with you. And please share that peace with whoever you might be with. And I invite us now to join together in singing our opening hymn is how great we are, how great. <laughs> There's probably a sermon in that. Uh, how great thou art. We'll sing a couple of verses and uh, the words are on the screen. So I invite you to mute and sing loud as we join together. Oops. feel like to make a contract with God. In this evening's reading from scriptures, we stand again at Sinai with our spiritual ancestors, the Israelites, as God gives them the top 10 list of rules they need to follow, the 10 commandments in exchange for God's support and protection. They are terrified. 
They have seen what God was able to do to Pharaoh's army, drowning them as they pursued the Israelites across the Red Sea. So this is God to not mess with. Amen. Fortunately, the rules are pretty simple. They're easy to understand. Even if one could take a whole lifetime learning how to live them out consistently. Are you ready to say yes to God all over again? Let's mark our approach to the holy this evening by lighting our candles. Please join me in the responsive prayer from Psalm 19. God's glory is on tour in the skies. Godcraft on exhibit across the horizon. Madam Day holds classes every morning. Professor Knight lectures each evening. Their words aren't heard. Their voices aren't recorded. But their silence fills the earth. Unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. God's reputation is 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee. Clean the slate, God, so we can start the day fresh. Keep, Keep us, us from, from stupid sins, sins from, from thinking, thinking we can take over your work. Your work. Then, then we can, we can start, start this day sun washed, scrubbed clean of the grime of, of sin. sin. Amen. The scripture is from Exodus 20. God spoke all these words. I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. No other gods, only me. No carved gods of any size, shape, or form of anything whatever, whether of things that fly or walk or swim. Don't bow down to them and don't serve them because I am God, your God, and I'm a most jealous God, punishing the children for any sins of their parents, pass on to them the third and yes, even to the fourth generation of those who hate me. But I'm unswervingly loyal to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. No using the name of God, your God, in curses or silly banter. God won't put up with the irreverent use of that holy name. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work, not you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, nor your animals, 
not even the foreign guest visiting in your town. For in six days, God made heaven, earth, and sea, and everything in them. God rested on the seventh day. Therefore, God blessed the Sabbath day. God set it apart as a holy day. Honor your father and mother so that you'll live a long time in the land that God, your God, is giving you. No murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lies about your neighbor, no lusting after your neighbor's house or wife or servant or maid or ox or donkey. Don't set your heart on anything that is your neighbor's. All the people experiencing the thunder and lightning, the trumpet blast and the smoking mountain were afraid. They pulled back and stood at a distance. They said to Moses, you speak to us and we'll listen, but don't, God, don't have God speak to us or we'll die. Moses spoke to the people, don't be afraid. God has come to test you and instill a deep and reverent awe within you so that you won't sin. Amen. Thank you, Sherilyn. It probably didn't look quite like it did in the movie, The Ten Commandments. Though I wonder what Cecil B. DeMille would have done with this text if you're making the movie today. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, I thank you for this day, for all of its blessings and for all of its opportunities. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight and that together we might discover your word and your wisdom for us today. Amen. Well, I was looking for jokes about the Ten Commandments, and it was hard for me to find one that was suitable to tell in church. So um, next time we'll try to Google some sites that are a little less adult. We've got rules to follow. And these are, if you will, the top 10. There are another 603 commandments or thereabouts that observant Jews will follow. And they cover everything from uh, not planting two prop crops next to each other in the same field to um, uh, what you eat and what you don't eat. So there are a lot of rules that you can make for people. There are a lot of rules uh, that are a, a good idea, especially we think for the Israelites coming out of, out of enslavement in Egypt. They didn't know how to take care of themselves. They didn't know what freedom was like because they'd never lived in freedom. So the rules, the Ten Commandments, put a fence around them that says, okay, you're free within these boundaries. That kind of makes sense. I've, I thought about how to do a sermon on the Ten Commandments, and I'm not going to have 10 points. That would take forever, and you would all be asleep by the time I was halfway through. So not going to do that. Let me just suggest that these commandments fall into three groups. The first group is the first three commandments. I am God, your God, no other gods before me, and no making graven images, and respect my name. The first three are about respecting God. Right? The last six are about respecting other people. Honor your father and your mother, no murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lying, no coveting anything that belongs to your neighbor. Right? It's respecting other people's boundaries. I think the fourth one 
kind of ties them together because honoring the Sabbath day, keeping the Sabbath day is about respecting God and respecting other people. And also I think about respecting ourselves. So I'm gonna say a little bit about false gods and a little bit about keeping the Sabbath. And I think that'll give us plenty to think about for the week. When we talk about false gods, uh, nowadays we don't have pagan gods, uh, the old, you know, roadside shrines to gods that were here before Christianity, gods that people worship before Christianity. It's very different from the time of the Israelites. Usually when we talk about not worshiping false gods, we think about ideas or uh, qualities in our lives rather than personages. For example, uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. And for some of us, money is a false god. Um, you know, if you think about Ebenezer Scrooge in Dickens' A Christmas Carol, um, he lived for money, and that was it. He lived for profit, and he had no use for anything that didn't bring him profit. That's a false god. Amen. Uh, sometimes our pride is a false god. Um, I can't believe I offered a sermon illustration by trying to invite us to sing how great we are. Um, not that there's anything wrong with any of us. We're all good. We're all wonderful. We're all fabulous. And <laughs> we're not God. Amen. I'm not God. You're not God. God is in us, but, you know, God's in charge, we're not. So that's, so that could be a false God, worshiping ourselves. Marcia Stevens Pino talks about another kind of false God. And that's the God that sometimes this passage has us thinking about. That's the God who is out to smite us. The God who's out to smite people who break any of God's laws. Sometimes Christian teachers say that the God of the Old Testament is a, a nasty, um, very demanding judge. But the God of the New Testament is a God of love and mercy. And that's not really correct. Because it depends on where you look in the Old Testament. In, in the Hebrew scriptures, the God of Exodus 20 is definitely one who says, these are the rules, don't mess with me. If you hate me, you're gonna, re you're gonna regret it. You're gonna be so sorry. But if you love me, your life is gonna be so blessed, right? But that's not the only, that's not the only portrayal of God in the Hebrew scriptures. So I want us to be careful about that. For example, in the book of Hosea, um, I find Hosea problematic um, because what might have been acceptable behavior in the time of the prophet would now be considered domestic violence. Um, so I always read Hosea with some trepidation. But the main theme of Hosea is that God is a God who says, I love you, even though you cheat on me, even though you break the rules that I've set, but I still love you and I want you back, right? So the God of mercy, the God who loves us is scriptural. And that is in the Hebrew scriptures as well as the Christian scriptures. It's in Torah and the prophets, as well as in the gospels and the epistles and acts. So Marcia talks about the time that she spent dreading the God that was gonna come get you. And she frequently says in her concerts, if you don't wake up every morning 
loving and knowing the God of the prodigal son, the God who will drop everything and run out to the road to meet you, the God who will never, ever, ever be separated from you for any other reason. If that's not the God you believe in, fire that God and get the real one. So we have a God who loves us. And even if the Israelites were scared to go up on the mountain, we don't need to be scared about inviting God into our lives. So that's one false God that's worth firing. Amen. The commandments about respecting other people, they're kind of obvious, they're kind of the basics, right? Don't murder. Don't do violence in speech. Don't steal. Don't borrow people's intellectual property without giving them credit for it and paying them for it if it's appropriate, right? You can go on and on developing those rules. But they're about setting the boundaries that allow all of us to live peaceably together. So how about the Sabbath day? A bunch of us were together outside, appropriately physically distancing yesterday. Um, it was so wonderful to see you all in person. Um, and uh, somebody asked me what I was going to preach on today. And I said, the Ten Commandments. And she said, so which commandment do you have the most trouble with? Or I, th I think it was the which commandment do you have the, the hardest time with? And this is the one I have the hardest time with keeping the Sabbath day. Uh, it's an occupational hazard for a preacher because Sunday is a work day for me. I know this doesn't look like I'm working, um, but it is. It's a work day. So I have to make sure I take a Sabbath some other day. To take a day off completely, sometimes I have trouble doing that. I don't know about any of the rest of you, but you know, it may be easier for those of us who are retired to say, okay, this is the day I'm not gonna do any work. I'm not gonna stress. I'm just gonna relax, appreciate the earth, give thanks to God for my life, spend time with those that I love. That's Sabbath. That's what it's supposed to be about. Sometimes I think some of us have trouble keeping Sabbath because that false God of, of me gets in the way. I don't think the world can turn without me for one day. Uh, last time I checked, it can. Um, like I said, I'm not God. I don't keep everything moving. You know, I... I've been on this earth for <clears throat> years and I will not be on this earth forever. And when I'm dead, there will still be bluebirds and black eyed Susans and stars and the moon in the sky and the sun in the sky. And they will go on and on and on, God willing, unless, unless we're foolish enough to destroy life on the planet, you know, God willing, this world is going to go on and on and on. So it doesn't, it's not because we have to keep working to keep the world going on. And sometimes, sometimes some of us have trouble not working because we don't know who we are when we're not at work. There's a, there's a campaign commercial that's I've seen on TV a lot where one of the candidates mentions that a job is, is, is more than just a paycheck, it's your identity, it's who you are. And that's true. You know, when people ask who, you know, what, what do you do? I tell them, I'm a, I'm, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor. And I'm also a part-time college professor. So what I do for a living says something about me and my skills and my interests and my passion. Fortunately, my passions. I'm fortunate enough and blessed enough 
to be able to do work that I love that's in my wheelhouse. For some of us, we take that so far that we don't know what to do when we don't have a job anymore. How many people have you, have you met who retire and just can't think of anything to do? Sometimes people don't live very long in retirement. They just can't think of what to do and don't have a reason to keep living. Well, God calls us to be human beings. The Sabbath reminds us to be a human being instead of a human doing every now and then. You know, we are our work. And up to a point, that's a good thing, but we are so much more than that. We're people who love, amen. We're people who create art, who create music, who play athletics and play sports and give other people the fun of, of watching us enjoy and use the bodies that God gave us. We have all different kinds of things about ourselves that are, that are beautiful, that are relaxing, that are recreating. And when we are creating things, we're being in the image of God because God's creation is not finished. And God's creation continues in part in the things that we co-create with God through our lives. So there are 10 rules to remember, at least the top 10. If you do those, you're doing very well. Respect God. Respect God's name. Respect other people. Don't hurt them, don't lie about them. Don't covet what they have and respect the Sabbath. Respect God and other people. Don't make other people do things for you on the Sabbath. Don't work yourself. One moment, please. Please excuse me for a minute while I turn my phone off. There. I forgot where I was. Sorry about that. And the Sabbath gives us a, re a reminder that we're not in control, amen. So will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day of rest, for this day to enjoy the beauty of the earth. And we pray that this week, we'll not only go about our work, go about our, our business, go about our household tasks, but also make some time for Sabbath. Make some time to just stop and give you thanks for what is and what will be. Help us to be humans being instead of always being humans doing. And help us to be in love with you and the world. We ask this in Jesus' name and all your many names. Amen. This evening, we have an opportunity to give thanks to God in, in offerings back to God, whether you offer 
uh, a donation to Metropolitan Community Church Sacred Journey or someplace else, we invite you to take this time to give, to be generous as God is generous. And I also want to remind you that Interfaith Assistance Ministry needs our help more than ever. We are still collecting items to give to their pantry to help our neighbors who are in need. In this time of COVID, there are still a whole lot of people out of work and a whole lot of people in need. So please check the list that's at the end of the announcements at the end of the service, and that will give you the information about what we're collecting during the month of October. So will you pray with me, please? Holy One, I thank you for those who, who can give. I thank you for those who are not able to give. I thank you for the gifts that you give to us every day. Please inspire all of us. Please inspire all of us. Please guide us. Let your spirit guide us to tell us how to give. And let your spirit remind us to go about our lives with a spirit of generosity because that's your spirit. That's your spirit. And as your people, it does us good to follow in that spirit. In the name of Jesus and all your many names, amen.
let's take a moment now to bring our prayers before God. We pray for, pray for our church, for the members of MCC Sacred Journey and the friends, and God, that you would make us your church in this world. We've got outside the building. We're not stuck in the building anymore. So help us to be your church as we move through the world this week. And we trust that you will bring us the resources that we need. We pray for those who are dear to us, family members and friends. We pray for the serenity of everybody who's in need of serenity for the peace of those who are worried about what's going to happen next or what's going to come tomorrow. We pray for healing for those with COVID-19, for Renee, for the president and the first lady, for all those other people, all those other people in that body of 7 million who are still sick, that they might find healing. We pray for caregivers that you would sustain them. We pray for those who've lost loved ones to this or any other illness, that they might be comforted. And we pray God for a cure. We pray for our country, that you would guide us in this election season to choose leaders who will be the leaders you would have in our government, that they would have a heart for the good of the people. We pray for Joe for healing, for Kay, for Sherilyn and for Jenny and Linda, for those who are on your hearts that you wish to name right now. For our friend Nancy, who is in a, a car accident this past week. Yes, God. Yes, God. Bring her healing and wholeness. We pray for safe travel for Jean and Hillary, for safe travels for Sharon. And for safe travels for everyone who commutes. And for the other intentions that we keep in the silence of our hearts. And together, I invite us to pray as Jesus taught us to pray, using the words on the screen or whatever words make it comfortable and meaningful for you. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the dominion and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Here at MCC Sacred Journey, we celebrate an open communion. What that means is that we don't have a checklist of things you have to believe or say yes to in order to receive communion with us. Um, and we simply offer the table that is open because we believe that's what Jesus would want us to do. And we also believe in the priesthood of all believers, which means among many other things that you have all the spiritual authority you need to take bread and the fruit of the vine and partake of them and share them with somebody else and have that be for you however you understand it, your communion with the living Christ.
And so we remember that before he died, one of the last things Jesus did was to have supper with his friends. That he took bread from the table, gave God thanks for it and blessed it, broke it and shared it with them saying, take and eat all of you. My body, my life given for you completely. And he took a cup of wine from the table, gave God thanks and praise for it, blessed it, and shared it with them saying, take and drink all of you. This is my love, my life poured out for you so that sins might be forgiven. Poured out so that humankind, humankind might be reconciled with God once and for all. So drink this, take it inside of you and remember me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Wisdom has baked her bread and poured her wines and has set a feast. So whatever feast you have at hand, I invite you to partake right now. justice, lives of compassion and tolerance. But then we hear others talking about how much they love you and how can they love you if they do not even love all those you love. We know Jesus that you prayed and hoped and even believed that this world could become like heaven. So make us your hands and your feet, your voice and especially your heart until all the children of earth understand that though we are many, we are one. There's no closing song this evening is, is in remembrance. The words are on the screen. I invite you to sing.
And so let us go remembering Jesus and being Jesus in the world with the blessing of the one who is creator in Christ and spirit and more names than we can imagine. God loves us. Let's go share that love and let the people sing amen. Again, thank you for sharing worship with us tonight. Um, next Sunday, we will celebrate MCC's anniversary Sunday. We call it Fellowship Sunday. And uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, a few announcements here. Bible study will be Thursday at 11 on Zoom. And I want to thank Paul Wolf for his many years of contributing his gifts of music. For MCC Sacred Journey. Paul has graciously allowed us to use some of his recorded accompaniments going forward, um, but he's going to step back from this and um, take care of his life, which is always a good thing to do. So we thank you, Paul, and if you'd like to send your thanks to him, the information is on the screen. Uh, monthly I Am Food Giving is here, and I invite you to have a wonderful week. Uh, I'm going to play the prelude and, uh, and uh, look forward to connecting with those of you who want to stay on Zoom for a little bit. We'll be around for a couple more minutes. Bye-bye.